everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Performance Cafe. Uh, I hope that you've had a good week since last we spoke. And uh, today, I'd like to wrap up our series on resilience with a particularly sticky topic. And it is something that I have found most of my clients who are managers, who I coach, um, really run into a problem with resilience when it's someone else's problem. So for those of you who aren't in the know, as a manager, there will always come a time where we have to support someone who's dealing with something in their personal lives. And there's just never been a great solution to this because, you know, we, when, as many of you know, my soapbox is the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution taught us to leave ourselves at home. Now we've got Brene Brown saying, bring your whole self to work, and we love that. But how do we deal as managers with whole selves being brought to work? I think that a lot of people have the basic need and uh, the basic ability to be kind towards others. So I don't think that this is a lack of caring issue. I think it is just a lack of skill issue. And when we take a look at how we as managers help people who are going through something in their personal lives, I think the, 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 they sort of two they two fields. The one says, well, you've got to be professional. So no, you don't deal with people in their personal lives and they don't bring their personal lives to work either. And on the other hand, you've got people going, oh, but we want, bring, we want people to bring their whole self to work. We want people to be comfortable at work. We want them to see work as kind of a family, uh, a, a home away from home. And between these two, there's utter and total chaos because slapping in the middle, we have HR. And HR is sitting there and they are sweating blood because on the one hand, they have the, they have, they have the mandate to create a great workplace where there's employee engagement, where there is compassion and support for our people. And on the other hand, they're sitting with a, oh my word, is this going to become a nightmare because we don't have we don't have the right to be in therapeutic conversations with our employees. We don't, uh, we, we, we legally should not be having these this kinds of discussions. What if one of our managers actually gives someone um, advice and that advice blows back? So uh, this is a really big topic, right? It's not just about, oh, I don't know how to be kind. It is literally, um, it's really steeped in, in complexity. So I thought today, I'd like to give you a couple of pointers on how to deal with this that's going to make HR's heart very happy and maybe yours as well. So first things first, I think, and I'd like to introduce you to three methods. The first method is, I think, around just hearing people out. Um, you know, it's quite interesting. I was reading a book somewhere, for the life of me, I can't remember which one it was, but basically it was by a coach and he said that he thinks that one of the most unique things is for people to be heard nowadays. That's why coaching and therapy are so 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 sought after right now, is because people don't have anyone else who will just sit and hold space and just let them speak. And that's the interesting thing about coaching that people don't often realize is that coaches don't actually give advice. They don't tell you how to fix things. They are there to hear you out and potentially ask you questions to help you clarify what it is that you want to do. And so my first tip is just hear them out. If someone is going through something, take some time in your diary, even if it's just 20 minutes, and say to them, let's just chat about it. Let me let me tell you. Out. It gives them an opportunity to vent. And very often, only when people start speaking about it, they will realize how they, they they will realize their own thinking. You know, there's that quote of how will I know what I think if I don't hear what I say? And so very often that helps. Just the venting helps them, A, just vent, get it out. B, when they vent, they hear what they're saying. And maybe that helps them to start getting more of an idea around how do I get to control this situation? And the third part of it, of course, is make sure that you either have water in your water in your office, bottled water in your office, or tissues. But the important thing here is it shouldn't be easy to access. So what one finds is very often when people start speaking, and especially if they're getting emotional, 
then we want to give them the tissues and the water. And if it's too close at hand, it doesn't actually give them pause. So what happens is if someone start venting or speaking and we hand them, we, we say, let me get you a glass of water and we walk out or we go, I've got to get it out of that cupboard. The fact that the mere fact that you stop and move away from them actually gives them an opportunity to slow themselves down, maybe recognize emotionally where they are, maybe take a breath and just, you know, um, just calm themselves down somewhat. And sometimes it's just that little break that moves them from emotional space into thoughtful space where they can start sort of like really getting to grips with what a solution could be or what they need for the next step even if it's not the entire solution. I like to do that every once in a while with people just to let them blow off steam, so to speak. The second time, if they come back and they've still got the same problem, and especially if they've asked you to help them think through this, I like to use the model from the uh, book Option B by Sheryl Sandberg and Adam Grant where uh, she actually used the following when her husband passed away very suddenly. The reason I like this is because it's not about you as manager solving that problem. It's about you as manager just helping them think through the situation. And in the, in the book, uh, they refer to the three Ps. Firstly, is it personal? So when something has gone wrong, is it personal, i.e. someone went out to hurt me, or is it personal, i.e. I caused it myself, right? Then the next question is, is it permanent? Is this going to last for the next 30, 40, 50, 60 years till the end of my life? And the third question is, is it pervasive? Does this one thing actually break everything else? Because you see, very often when we're in that situation where we need to be heard, where we're not sure of what we need to do, we also sometimes overreact to what's going on in the environment. Now, please don't say overreact in front of someone who's reacting that way because it's just going to make situations worse. But often things are not personal, right? They happen because they happen. So, for example, someone drives on their way to work, someone crashes into them. It's actually not personal. As much as they might feel that, it just happened. It could have been any two cars that could have collided. Is it permanent? Well, no, it's going to last for at least a month while, you know, the car's being fixed um, at the panel beaters or while they're ordering the parts, whatever the case is. But it's really not permanent. So now all of a sudden, it's not personal, which makes it smaller. It's not permanent. It's uncomfortable for a month, right? But it's not the end of the world. Is it pervasive? Is the fact that I'm without a car going to change my entire world? Well, it may or it may not. You see, you might have Colleagues will help you drive to work. You might have the ability to order food online. You might have a very nice boss who says you can work from home for that month so you don't even have to go through the getting people to help and support you as you try and sort out your life. So therefore, what was overwhelming within 15 minutes can come down to, okay, it's so uncomfortable, but it's actually not the end of the world. And then the third step, if someone comes back to you and they still want to carry on in this way, well, then at that point, it is appropriate for you as a manager to redirect this individual to someone in HR. You see, HR will have the appropriate structures around therapy and getting, you know, sort of trauma counseling, getting um, finances arranged for dealing with the car maybe looking at policies within the business to see, you know, what policies can we use in order to make sure that we make the next month a little bit easier for this person, you know, for example, work from home, social media policies, IT policies, all of that kind of stuff. Because at that point, you, by assisting as a manager, as well-meaning as you are, might be getting into that place where you could get into legal trouble because therapy is not your job. We're advising this person and supporting this person from the best of intentions actually not only takes time out of your day, but will also land you in hot water if something does go wrong. So those are the three measures I would say that you could use as a manager in order 
to assist someone who's going through something in their personal lives and you sort of want to care, you want to support, but you just don't want to get caught in this for an extended period of time. Firstly, hear them out. Secondly, ask them the three Ps on the second visit and on the third visit. You say to them, it's best that we get you someone who has the right qualifications and background to help you. And you send them to a therapist or to HR who can help them with whatever structures there are in place in the business. So I hope that that clarifies the three steps to dealing with employees who are going through uh, personal issues. I hope that you found this very useful. If you have, please feel free to go and look on any of our social media sites for everything else that we've posted with regards to resilience in the past couple of weeks. And then these also get used as blogs. So we get we post blogs on these uh, on our site, performforward.com. And uh, we always love to hear from you. So feel free to comment wherever you can, however you want to, around titles that you'd or topics you'd like us to take a look at or any comments about what we've posted and if you think there are better and different ways of doing it. But until our next episode, I will see you next time at the Performance Cafe.